In this module, we look at getting an edge. An edge is something which tips the balance of probability of trading success your way. There are possibly as many different ways to get an edge in the market as there are traders. And like the 10 rules of profitable spread betting, edges might be system edges, operational edges, or psychological edges. We're going to look at four system edges in the areas of setup, entry, exit, and bet size. First, let's look at setups. What is a setup? A setup is a set of market conditions which, provided something else then occurs, provide trading opportunities. When we find a setup which gives us an edge, all the necessary things we're looking for to take a trade are there, except one. So to take the trade, we're looking for just one more thing to happen. Setups effectively enable us to generate a short list of trading candidates, streamlining our trading activity to focus just on the few instruments which potentially will give us opportunities to trade. We can then ignore the rest. The one thing we are looking for once we have found a setup is the trigger, the final reason to take the trade. So, moving on to entry. There is a simple ABC formula here. A is the setup. No setup, no entry. B is the trigger. We do not take a trade just if we see a setup. We wait for the trigger. No trigger, no entry. C is the entry, which only occurs after we have found a setup and then there has been a trigger. Now let's move on to exit which is more important than entry and requires just as much planning and forethought. For many spreadbetters, the quality of their exit technique represents the difference between winning and losing in the long term. In this DVD, we're aiming to get an edge by using multiple exit techniques in combination, each designed for a different purpose. But the techniques themselves are simple. First, we will always, always, always have an initial stop when we place a bet, a predetermined point at which we will exit the bet if it goes against us. As well as the more obvious reason for doing this, which is to conserve capital. Having the predetermined exit point also defines our expected risk on the trade, barring gaps and other symptoms of volatility, and gives us a basis for measuring reward versus that risk. Next, some of the time, we will be exiting at a predefined target and generally that target will be at the point where we get a gain of twice our original risk. The purpose of this is to bag profits of a certain size when they occur and not run the risk that they disappear. There's a trade-off here of course because we will not be running our profits to get even bigger profits like a long-term trend follower might do. So sometimes we will exit with a profit twice our original risk and then discover we could have got a lot more by hanging on. The assumption is we will do better in the long run by taking profits when we get twice our risk. We are structuring our exit methodology to the type of trading we will be doing. Some of the time we'll be using time exits. We will have a maximum amount of time for any one bet to be open. We will link this maximum to the length of time we expect the edge of our setup to last. This will enable us to reduce risk by not hanging on to a trade when our edge is gone and will enable us to recycle our risk capital to potentially more productive areas. And some of the time we'll be using trailing stops. In line with predetermined rules we will move our stop either to reduce risk or to lock in profits while still giving ourselves the opportunity for further gain. Finally Let's look at bet size, which must be linked to the individual's objectives and risk profile. Actually, for many successful traders, bet size is how they achieve their objectives. Here are some possible objectives some people might have to stay in the game, to give the long-term edge in any of the strategies they use a chance to play out. The strategies in this DVD generate a lot of potential trading opportunities. But obviously that won't be of any use if the trader is out of the game through betting too much before they can benefit 
from any long-term edge in the strategies they're using. Partly for that reason, the benchmark in this DVD for the maximum amount to be risked on any one bet is 1% of available speculative funds. As I said, this figure needs to be matched to the objectives and risk profile of the individual. We'll also discuss briefly the need to put a cap on total exposure as well as a cap on risk on individual bets. In the workbook, you'll find some further notes on the topics covered in this module, plus a number of review questions. That concludes Module 3.